But you all know the drill by now. So uh, we've decided to change it up a little bit today. So uh, raise your hand if this is your first DEF CON as an attendee. You liars. All right, you on the end. Yes, you. Get up here. No, 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 get them up on stage. I mean, come on. You can dream, can't you? Here's 1,500 of my closest friends. Well, wait, what do you just? <laughs> All right, pour him another one. He can't. You don't, dude. Slow down. Holy shit, he's taking a. All right, you know what? Hold it. Don't give it to him until we're ready, because he's scaring me. All right, our our tradition is first-time speakers. We get. Where's mine? All right, first time speakers. How about a round of applause for our first time speaker and for our first time attendee? Good luck with your talk. Yeah, the person typewriting this will have a hard time now. I want to point out he had no accent before that shot. <laughs> Yeah, sorry guys, my English is uh, Spanglish. <laughs> All right, I'm going to talk about SE Android, uh, which is, uh, as you might know, uh, Cell Linux uh, in Android operating system. It has now been uh, renamed, so it, the name is Security, Defeating Security Enhancements for Android. Uh, my name is Paul Ibafora. Uh, I'm at POF in Twitter. Uh, some of you follow me. Uh, if you don't, you should. Uh, and yeah, I'm a mobile security engineer with Via Forensics. I do R&D uh, in Android security. And I'm also a co-author of the Android Hackers Handbook, uh, which hopefully will come out later this year. Uh, I've brought uh, these postcards, so you are welcome to come after the presentation and grab one. I have a bunch of them here. Uh, all right. And this is the agenda for today. Uh, first, uh, I will talk about in which devices I have tested three Android, most of them. Uh, then I will briefly talk about the effectiveness and weaknesses of C Android, and then uh, to the dirty details of the implementation issues that I've found on most of these devices. Uh, so first uh, thing that you might want to try if you uh, care about SC Android, you can compile it from public sources, that is uh, AOSP, Android Open Source Project, and also the Bitbucket repository that the NSA controls, your beloved NSA. Uh, they are the contributors of the C Android code and they host it in Bitbucket. Uh, so uh, there is the SC Manager application, which is used to set the system in enforcing mode, and also the SC, Ma SC Admin, which uh, is now uh, has replaced uh, C Manager. Uh, it's better because it runs uh, as a device administrator, uh, while C Manager just runs as a system application. Uh, I've also tested C Android in the Toshiba AT300 tablet. It's, uh, this tablet here, uh, to my knowledge, this is the first device that was uh, in the market with some C Android implementation. It's, it's a bit weird. It's not the same as C Android we have seen in uh, other devices. It uses a C Lime a Linux kernel mo module. And uh, yeah, it's based on an early implementation of uh, SE Linux. Uh, it runs uh, as a Linux security module. And finally, uh, Android 4.3 came last week, and as you might know, it comes with SE Linux by default. So I've also tested it a little bit before coming here and found little things. Uh, yeah. You might know that uh, C Android is effective. Uh, it's good to enforce fine-grained mandatory access control, which uh, it's different from the 
uh, discretionary access control that we are used in uh, Linux and Unix system and also in Android with file permissions and user IDs. Uh, so it, in SE Android, you have also uh, three different branches to test uh, mandatory access control in install time of application, also in intents and in content providers. Uh, it is good to prevent privilege escalations by isolating context. So a context is a process runs inside a context. So for example, uh, we can say an untrusted application, uh, we can define a rule to set if we allow this untrusted application to access files on the SD card or uh, access the radio interface layer, whatever, we, we, if we would like to allow it to do or not. Uh, so uh, as every application runs confined in this context, uh, this uh, allows to uh, prevent privilege escalations because application cannot access file outside this context. Uh, it's also good to uh, do permissions checks on IPC, inter-process communication operations, which is mainly binder on Android. And it's good also to do permission revocation of application, either at install time or on already installed applications. And yeah, but not everything is so good as it might sound. Uh, the most known thing, it, it runs at uh, kernel level, so uh, it doesn't protect against, against kernel vulnerabilities. If an attacker is able to get uh, arbitrary code execution in kernel land, uh, it's very easy for him to uh, disable completely the security of C Android. So for this, it needs to be enhanced with uh, for example, the typical setup is to have a secure bot mechanism that makes sure that the code that we are running, the kernel is not tampered or modified in any way. And also some runtime integrity check, which can be a hypervisor or, for example, trust zone also allows to make sure that uh, the, the kernel is not mute or modified at runtime. Uh, yeah, also, Vendors or companies deploying uh, policies for uh, employees using this uh, bring your own device thing, uh, they don't know how to write policies, right? Because uh, in a commercial device, uh, there can be like thousands of policies and it's hard to write them and hard to not make any mistake when there is a high number of policies. So, uh, that's what vendors are more uh, are having a hard time, right? Uh, and that's where they screw up as well. So this leads us to see the implementation issues. First thing, uh, okay, when when you have all your SC Android setup working properly, you set the system to boot in enforcing mode, uh, and some vendors, some people uh, setting this up forget about the recovery image. If you uh, boot in enforcing mode, mode also uh, don't forget your recovery to be in enforcing mode. Never let, leave it in permissive mode. So I was going to do a demo here, but this is so obvious that it doesn't need a demo. Uh, another thing is a policy screw up uh, of uh, vendors. They, they say, okay, my device is running in enforcing mode, so I'm preventing the root user to uh, set permissive mode again. So they write a rule that says root user cannot uh, set the device in uh, permissive. So root user cannot use the set enforce command, right? But then they forget about system user. So again, <laughs> as you see here, uh, we, we have the id command, we are root, if, you, you, if we do a set enforce zero or echo zero to CSFS, Selenux enforce, it says permission denied, we just have to sue system, and once we are running with system privilege, we can just use set enforce zero and set the system to permissive. So typical screw up, right? Also, uh, this is another issue that uh, I've seen sometimes, uh, this comes because 
a lot of people has used the SE Manager application, and they rely on this application to set the system in enforcing mode. So uh, you should never set enforcing mode from a system application, right? We will see now why. Uh, if we combine this with fail number one, which if you remember was that recovery was left in permissive mode, it's very easy to reboot into recovery and pull the system APK of the SE Android manager just to have a backup, then remount the system in read-write mode and remove the SE Android manager APK from the slash system slash app folder. So we have just removed the system application that sets the system in, in enforcing mode, right? So it will boot in permissive. But what if we don't have access to recovery or what if recovery is running in, in enforcing mode? Well, no problem. Uh, this, sorry. Here, this is a Galaxy Nexus uh, running uh, SE Linux. We, we run the C Manager application. Uh, we put the system in enforcing mode. So in this shell here, uh, first I check if uh, the device is running in enforcing mode. So I use the command get enforce. I see it says enforcing. So now uh, I reboot the device and I set a one-liner to check every second uh, the get enforce command. So we see it says error device not found because the device is still booting. But once ADB diamond is running, we will see that the system is booting in permissive mode, right? And now the Android system, when it finished the boot, it broadcasts a uh, boot complete event to all applications that have registered to receive it. So it, it is now in enforcing mode because the C manager application has received the boot complete event and has set the system in enforcing. But you can see that we have a window there. So we can take this window where while the system is booting, uh, which is still in permissive mode, and we reboot the device again, and we will use this window. We have a little race condition here, but we have plenty of time. So we prepare this command, which use the package manager just to disable the com.android.se Android Manager application. So uh, in the upper terminal, we see it's booting in permissive. We execute the command, but it says error because the package manager is not loaded yet. But now it says, OK, uh, new state disabled. We have disabled the C Android Manager application, which is a system application. And the system is fully boot and is still in permissive mode, right? So uh, it's as easy as this to uh, disable a system application which sets the system in enforcing mode. So this should be always set in init. Uh, you have to set enforcing mode in init right before the ADB diamond starts. Um, so this uh, single one-liner here uh, will uh, do this, the same poke that we have seen in the video. You can also overcomplicate that and write an Android application with a, with a higher priority uh, boot receiver and do the same from an Android app. But yeah, system from, from the shell, it's easier and faster. Uh, now, the Toshiba tablet. Uh, if you remember, this was the C-Line module that doesn't uh, allow us to do some things like, for example, mounting the system partition in read-write mode, even if we are root. Uh, so this is, this is possible to do on any uh, Android system. But in this Toshiba tablet, it doesn't allow us to do this. Um, so I have, wait, I have a demo here. Yeah. So we will. use the Toshiba tablet, and we will disable this uh, CLIME module, which is based on SE Android. Okay, we run an ADB shell on the device. We see the CLIME module is loaded. We try to remove it, and it says it failed, right? It doesn't allow us to remove it. So we try to mount system partition in read-write, says operation not permitted. 
we try to list the proc se android uh, folder and it says operation not permitted. Okay, now I'm going to compile the exploit. The code will be available after the talk. Don't worry. Uh, so I uh, just ADB push this exploit into the data local TMP folder and access the ADB shell again. Just give execute permissions to the exploit and then run it. And now we have overwrite a, a kernel pointer and uh, run the reset security ops symbol, which uh, now disables the uh, Linux security module and allows us to remount the system in read write or list the proc SE Android folder, which was forbidden before. So we have effectively disabled this. Uh, this works because uh, in a lot of Android devices, not only this Toshiba tablet, but mm, a lot of vendors screw this. Uh, there is the config strict fmem uh, kernel configuration option, which says if in doubt, say yes, but they have said no. So this allows for full uh, access to kernel memory if, uh, on a root process, so you can poke the kernel memory as you wish. And finally, the Android 4.3. Uh, this uh, implementation issues that I have found real quick because it came last week. Uh, one thing is that the uh, over the air update from 4.2.2 to 4.3 uh, leads to unlabeled file system. Uh, we see here uh, ls of slash system, and we see that all files there are unlabeled. This is uh, because the recovery of Android 4.2.2, the recovery image of Android 4.2.2, is not uh, compiled with Linux support. So uh, this happens. Uh, we have reported this to Jean Baptiste Queru of IOSP, and he said it will be fixed in the next release. So because the Android 4.3 recovery is already uh, with uh, Linux support. And finally, if you want to play with it, uh, you have to know that the enforcing mode in Nexus devices isn't really enforcing. Uh, if you pull the SE policy file, which contains, is a binary file, which contains all the policies compiled on it, and you run the SE info command on it, you will see that, for example, here, this is for a, a Nexus 4. We see that there are 44 permissive uh, domain, so every single domain is set to permissive, and everything is unconfined. So enforcing isn't really enforcing here, right? So if you want to play with this, there is a tool by Joshua Brindle, which is the SC policy inject that allows to inject your own policies into this. Or you can also uh, compile from IOSP, right? Because now IOSP includes all the C Android stuff. And that's it. Thank you very much for attending. And <laughs> if you care about Android security, you should follow these guys here. They have helped me in the research and in the making of this presentation. And also in the URL at the bottom, in the Via Forensics website, you can download the presentation. And I will publish the exploit code and the videos later today. Thank you very much.